everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode of Strong Style here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by my co-host and brother in life, Aaron Turner. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm actually, I have a sore throat, and I'm like, I'm a little <laughs> concerned, honestly, in this day and age, but uh, but doing okay. Doing All okay. right. Everything Take else is fine. Slow. Take it slow. Where the yeah, I'm doing fine, other, doing fine other than that. <laughs> Have you gotten your booster? Are you qualified for the booster? I'm not qualified for the booster, but okay. I am vaccinated. So, um, okay. not I don't have one of those uh, fake cards like allegedly Antonio. Oh, oh, my God. I just read that story. <laughs> but it's it's oh, not true. Goodness. It's not true. It's fine. Okay. We're good. All right. We're All good. right. It's, it's proven. What, not what's not true? The Antonio Brown story isn't true? It's The not Antonio true? Brown story is not okay. true. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Yeah. And some of you may be asking, wait, that's a story from two days ago. Well, we're pre-recording this episode of Strong Style because we're not going to be able to do it live on Saturday. So we are dropping this on Saturday still at noon. So you're getting it at noon. Uh, we just won't be able to do it. I might be in the chat, though, as a premiere. So I might be in the chat with you all who are watching it and go back and forth re-watching the episode with you all. Uh, and then next week we'll be pre-taped as well because of Thanksgiving. So, you know, we just want to let you all know that ahead of time. But today we're going to talk about AEW Full Gear, that pay-per-view that happened. It's still fresh for both of us since it was just a few days ago. And we're also going to do a watch-along of the first ever rock match in uh, the WWE celebration, because it's what, the 25th anniversary of it? Is that correct? 25th Aaron, anniversary of The it? Rock's debut. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, Rocky Maivia. One of your favorites, if not your favorite. So, uh, yeah, of course, one of the greatest of all time. So why not? Absolutely. Pull out the blue, light blue tassels. Pull out the big uh, curly hair and the big smile. And we're going to take a look at that one. And it is that a Survivor Series. So, you know, it's a bunch of uh, a bunch of wrestlers going at it to see who's going to come out on top. We got uh, the King, Jerry Lawler. We got Triple H. Goldust is in this thing as well. And, and on the rock side, who's on the rock side? We got Mark Marrow. Hey, we've got uh, who else do we have? Uh, the Stalker, Barry Windham. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that. And then that I don't remember who else. Well. I don't remember who else is on the team. Oh, we'll find out when we get Oh, there. Jake sure. Roberts. Sorry. Jake, Jake Roberts. Jake the Snake, right on. And we're going to start at 51 minutes on the Peacock feed. So if you want to start getting that ready before we hit that time to watch along, yeah. 51 minutes of the Peacock feed, kind of in the middle of the promo, of the Heels promo before we get into the match, because it's a little bit of a long match, so we're going to do that here on the show as well. But uh, You're going to you're gonna have to bypass an ad, too, so you might as well yeah. go ahead and do that. <laughs> yeah, and, get uh, ready for it. Get ready for that, yeah. For sure, for sure. And listen, there, if I'm, if I'm going to be, if you see me here, on here watching it live as a premiere on YouTube, then the Super Chats and Streamlabs will be open, so I'll be happy to answer any of your questions or whatever as it goes along. For sure. If I'm on, if you see me on, and I will announce that I'm on when I when if I can make it for the premiere of our show at 12 p.m. on Saturday. All right, uh, Aaron, uh, AW Full Gear 2021. I, I'm hearing that people loved it, but it wasn't as good as last year. I'm hearing that final match was insane and incredible, and I agree with them. Uh, fantastic promo from uh, from uh, uh, Hangman Page afterwards. We had a lot of we had a couple of surprise appearances. No real surprise uh, victors overall, but some damn good matches and some okay matches throughout. What's your overall feeling coming out of AEW Full Gear 2021? Well, I think the expectations were high. I think yeah. we, we ourselves had high expectations. And True. I think for what it was, I think they, they met those expectations. I think mm -hmm. we got a lot of entertaining matches. We got some fluff, yeah. but we're used to that. As like WWE fans for a long time, we are quite used to that. So. Yeah. But this pay-per-view felt like a big deal, man. You had big people. You had CM Punk, uh, Brian Danielson, yeah, Omega, and Page, and uh, MJF. You got to see, uh, as as we talk about a lot on the show, the pillars of the young pillars of the company, MJF, yeah. and Darby Allen, and yeah. and uh, Britt Baker, and the others. So um, it kind of had a little bit of everything. Uh, Could have used less tag matches, but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Don't, don't leave out Jungle Boy and giving some love to the young yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah Jungle yeah. Boy also one of those young pillars. Absolutely. We, we had a number of championships on the line here throughout this pay-per-view. And, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the, the AEW World Championship, was on the line between the undefeated, well, the, uh, the uh, Kenny Omega being undefeated during his run, having the belt, facing Hangman Adam Page, an old friend of his, old running buddy of his, for the belt. CM Punk taking on Eddie Kingston, uh, the Inner Circle taking on ATT Men of the Year, Cody Rhodes and Pac taking on Andrade and Malachi, Malachi Black, Britt Baker defending her title against Tay Conti for the AEW Women's title. We got, as we said, uh, Christian Cage, Jungle Boy Luchasaurus against the Young Bucks and Adam Cole dressed out in that uh, Heart Foundation gear, Brian Danielson and Miro and the Lucha Bros and FTR going at it. But we started 
Aaron do with Hikira Shida, Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa taking on Jamie Hayter and Nyla Rose as the kind of kickoff match here. So shall we just get into it and start with that match? Let's go. I okay. mean, honest, honestly, the less said about it, the better. Um, <laughs> it's just a buy-in match. Like it means yeah. nothing. I mean, it's just something for these four women to do. And what's it, but what is interesting, like if you watch Dynamite, I don't know if you got a chance to watch it yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see a little dissension between uh, Jamie Hayter and yeah. Britt Baker and Rebel. We're starting to see the dissension there. So I think eventually we're going to get either a Jamie Hayter, uh, probably more than likely going to get a Britt Baker face turn, even though she's pretty much already face. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice development. Um, the thing is, like, Thunder Rosa, it's like in the AEW women's division, you've got Britt, you've got Thunder Rosa, mm -hmm. you've got Serena Deeb, and then you've got, like, Sheeta just a little bit below that. Yeah. Then, then you got everybody else. So there's, like, only a small hierarchy there. So yeah. as long as they keep Thunder Rosa winning um, – it's fine. I think she's going to be the one to take it off of Brit if they turn her, if they keep her heel, mm -hmm. if she turns baby face. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I like this. Uh, like you know, getting Thunder Rosa some early TV time. I'm a little surprised she was, you know, she wasn't a little more highlighted. They made a massive deal of her coming to AEW, so to have her be the opening, like the buy-in show, I think was a little surprise, or the buy-in match rather was a little surprising. But it was nice to see a wrestle and get some uh, get some uh, work in front of the fans, in front of the people there, and of course in front of the people who are watching the pay per view as well. It was nice to see, and hopefully there's more to come. But where's uh, Ruby? Where's uh, where where's she at? She's in that TBS title tournament, same place where uh, Jade Cargill is. Like they're yeah. just not trying to play those cards right now. So yeah. it would seem to me that you would want Ruby Soho, this big free agent, on the show, right? But I, I guess yeah. not. It was a little odd. A little odd. Uh, all right. Anything more to take away from this opening match? Uh, not really. Just okay. just a tag match for fun. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's uh, please take it away. Where, where do we move on to next, my man? All right. So next, talking about my probably man. It's got to be. It's up there of mm -hmm. favorite matches on the show. It's great. MJF versus Darby Allen. This is um, this is wise beyond its years. Like they yeah. just <laughs> they told a really good story. Um, MJF selling the knee. Um, yeah, so many times, even when he did the the tombstone on the apron, which is a little bit crazy, but yeah. he did it and he showed the injury. Uh, Darby Allen missing the coffee drop on the uh, on the apron, my god. Um, <laughs> and it just it really hit all the beats of, of excellent storytelling. And I yeah. think that you know, there was a moment where Wardlow and Sean Spears came down. And I was like, here we go, this is gonna get all crazy. And then Sting stopped them, and they yeah. all kind of just fought off, which was great because we get to keep the match going. Right. And then, of course, MJF playing the mind game, sliding the skateboard over to Darby, and Darby not hitting him with it, being the reluctant hero. Yeah. Then MJF cheating and hitting uh, Darby in the face with his ring and yeah. beats him with a headlock takeover, just like he said he was going to do. <laughs> Perfect storytelling. Love this match. The truth is, when you've got a great heel – You've got to be in service of the great heel. You've got to build him up. And MJF has been doing that. Was well, this is what his is this double digits yet for 2021 in terms of matches? Is this his 10th? Be close. Uh, yeah, right. We we gotta be close to the 10th match or 11th match that he's got for this year. But it's pretty incredible to sustain that kind of uh, attention, that kind of draw that he has as a heel, having fought only you know 10 or less matches. And here he is in a fantastic match with Darby Allen. This wing, this thing went back and forth. A number of really hardcore spots uh, that I was surprised by, and Darby kept coming. And uh, here's the thing: MJF was going to win. I knew MJF was going to win. It's not Darby stuff, but at some point, Aaron Dar Darby, what is he? Tw I think it was written somewhere twenty-eight and three this year in terms of his matches. At some point, they've got to start lining him up for something. Like at some point, Darby has put his time in now, and I wonder if 2022 is the time where Darby starts to ascend and actually gets victories in matches like this against MJF. But he gave MJF all he could absolutely handle. And yeah, they played the young card a little bit with the mind games and all of that. But that, I think, is all being set up not only to promote MJF this year, but later down the road to promote Darby Allen. And how he, when he finally figures out, becomes a little more of a veteran type thing in the ring. I think a match like this is something people could look back to and be like, yeah, it was all there. He just needed that extra oomph to get over the uh, the hump and become one of the greats. So I don't know. I, I feel like you've been on the fence on Darby sometimes. So do you like what he what he did in this match? Do you think this is yet another great example of it? And are we at the point where enough of these moral victories? He's got to get some real victories against real 
uh, competitors here. Well, I mean, he was just the TNT champion not long ago. Uh, yeah. um, just to kind of just to kind of give you like you made you made a great point about uh, like activity um, mm-hmm. overall. Um, Darby Allen this year, if we're including singles, tag team, and everything, he's twenty eight and four. Oh, four. In 20, okay. In twenty twenty one. Right. MJF ten and three. <laughs> so he's lost. What three the times. hell is going? Yeah, but what the hell? Like thirteen matches. That's like he's re- like like uh, Darby Allen's wrestling three times as much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Um, I've really come around on Darby. Um, when I first saw him, like in the independence, like when I actually saw him live, I was like, "Well, this guy's nothing but a crash test dummy. He's not gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna do anything." But the like this guy probably weighs 150 pounds with rocks in his in his pockets. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, he, there's something about Darby that. Yeah that attitude man he's got it he's got yeah. that like that anti-hero kind of thing going on where people just gravitate towards this guy like yeah. one of my good friends sent me a picture of his uh nephew on halloween he's dressed up as darby allen like wow. it's just it's just the influence that darby has there's so many kids that like look up to this guy and adults as well yeah and he's really the the way that darby i think captures people's minds is the way he is in the ring mm-hmm. that guy will get will literally die to give you the best match that he can. I think people just really appreciate that. I know I do. Yeah, yeah. That, ditto. I've really uh, enjoyed his uh, ascension, so to speak, as a wrestler. And I think, I've, like as I said, I feel we're on the cusp of him finally getting over that hump, and we're going to start to see him holding bigger and bigger belts. Yeah, he'd won the TNT title. Eh, you know, eh, the AEW World Heavyweight title is where it's at, and I wonder if Darby is starting to slowly make a move towards that in the next year or, or so but mjf does his thing keeps going how much longer do you think mjf can keep this going in terms of the heal them man before we move off this match how much more is there to mine from this before the inevitable face turn or some form of that what do you think i think he's the guy that you never have to turn face wow because he's just a Roddy so Piper. Wait, well yeah all right all right he's just so good at being a heel man yeah. ever like even in the age of smart wrestling fans and aw has a bunch of the smart wrestling fans mm-hmm they still hate this guy. Yeah. Like he still makes them hate him. And there's just something to that. Yeah. That's really incredible. I think we saw a lot of, I think what AEW is doing right now, because yes, he did have the title match against uh, John Moxley not too long ago, but yeah. I think they're testing the waters with what they have in MJF in terms of, can he draw big? Because right. now if you saw dynamite, it's going to be, looks like MJF and CM Punk. Yeah. So you want to talk about just I'm coming for the promos alone. I don't even care if they touch. (laughs) I just want to see the promos. So I think AEW and Tony Khan want to see what drawing power MJF has Mm -hmm. with a big money superstar like CM Punk. I think it'll do great. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, All right. Well, where are we off to next? All right. So uh, this next contest, the AEW World Tag Team title match, Hmm. the Lucha Brothers defeated FTR to retain a lot of... um, I said this would be a clash of styles. I said this may not work out the way we want to. And I think for the most part, it did not. It did okay. not deliver what I wanted it to. Uh, Pentagon with the horrible corner punches that were completely missing Dax's head. Yeah. At one point, it was uh, suspected that Dax um, got a concussion, which is mm-hmm. why he was out of the match for a lot of time, um, especially towards the end. And it just wasn't up to an FTR standard, which, uh, of course, if you have one that's concussed, it's going right. to happen. Right. Uh, just, just kind of a disappointing matchup in something that could have been good. Wow. Wow. I don't, I, I don't think I feel that way about it at all, man. I, okay. I, I like this match. I thought Lucha bros showed out really well. I thought FTR, I mean, th- these guys have wrestled so many times, Aaron, it just, at some point you're just kind of like, okay, are we going through the motion? So yeah, there were a couple of blown spots. I'm not going to disagree with you there, but the fans were into it, man. The fans love the Lucha bros. They were behind the Lucha bros hardcore throughout this whole thing. And they took care of business with FTR. So in the end, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. Yeah. Yet another victory over FTR. So at some point, FTR is going to get those belts back. And we'll just run this back again between these guys down the road. But for right now, they put on a good match, in my opinion. And, you know, no no title change stands because it wasn't time for them to change hands of the title. And, and I found out, I didn't know this. I didn't know the Lucha Bros have a, have a store in L.A., I am going to visit that store the next time I'm in, I'm in LA and buy some stuff for LA. God's sake. So I what, what do they have? Great store. I have no idea, but I looked it up huh. and it was like, oh, here's a store and they run a store. So I'm sure they have all kinds of wrestling gear there. So, cool. you know, Black Friday is coming up. Maybe I'll go buy some stuff. Um, anything with FTR here? Do they lose anything by this loss, man? I mean, 
people still respect them and love these guys. I think they'll be title holders no, at man. some F- point again, right? FTR is just, you know, they're just impossibly good. Like, yeah. I just, I really just want them to break out on their own. They don't need MJF. They don't need this pinnacle stuff. Like, I just yeah. wish they would do their own thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. So just for the record, the name of the store is the Republic of Lucha. That's the name of the store. They sell posters, T-shirts, tote bags. They've got uh, jewelry, Lucha gloves, hats, masks, and uh, even the candles, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Prayer, go. Gotta have your prayer candles. <laughs> is that right. Uh, all right. Uh, what's the, oh, and they've got books for those of you who read. All right. Where's the next uh, Where's the next match we're going for to? For those of you who read, what the I hell? Don't, <laughs> you know, anyway. I don't want to, you know. The, ne- the next matchup was the AEW uh, Title Eliminator Tournament Finals. Yeah. It's Brian Danielson defeating Miro by submission. Yeah. Which, which I did not see coming. I thought that Miro was going to take this. What the hell, John? I know. I felt like both of us felt like Miro was going to win this thing, I think. And so we're both we both kind of wrong here. Uh, and he worked on his neck and did his thing here. And Brian Danielson now, we saw an AEW uh, Dynamite that he is uh, kind of moving towards a heel turn here to take on Hangman Adam Page. So we both speculated that it could be interesting for Page to have Miro as his first kind of opponent but now it's brian danielson which would have been interesting for kenny omega so interesting kind of juxtaposition here that's happening but i thought this was a damn good match not a great match uh you have to understand the styles of both of these guys if you were expecting high flying madness you were here for the wrong match this is old school drag it out pound it down or rather grind it down pound you in the face type of match and in the end brian danielson got the job done both, I think, though, looked great throughout the match. Uh, it, maybe the match didn't 100% live up to expectations, but I thought it was a damn good match. Yeah, we know these guys. These guys have wrestled before. We kind of know what to expect from them. I'm sure Brian was the guy that was running the whole match, to yeah, telling Miro probably. everything to do. And they just, again, they told a good story. Miro has the bad neck. He's got the you know, the Achilles factor, right. the Achilles heel. It's his neck. That's how he lost to Sammy Guevara. That's how he lost here. Right. So the question becomes, what happens to Miro? Does he start wearing a neck brace? Like, what's <laughs> what's the deal? But yeah, man, it's the catalyst for this Brian Danielson heel turn that we saw on Dynamite. Yeah. Talking about WrestleMania in front of an AEW crowd, are you insane? <laughs> like it's just, it was it was what it, exactly what it needed to be. It kept the yeah. credibility in Brian Danielson's eyes, and you know, I don't think Miro lost too much here. Yeah, yeah, no, but you want, I, I like what you're saying. You wonder where the neck thing is going to go. Where are they taking this? Is this an extended time off for Miro? Is this, are they going to play that angle? Is this more a matter of where he's got to like, kind of, he's going to take a couple more losses and then he's got to go do that kind of journey thing that wrestlers do sometimes with the injury and kind of exploring what he's got to do next, make some adjustments, what have you. Is he going to have some sympathy from the crowd eventually as well for his injuries? I don't know. But uh, it could be interesting because he's such a big, strong dude to give him a, a, a constant source of pain or a constant injury that costs him matches. You've got to make something out of that in the storyline. you got to pay that off yep. down the road. So I wonder what that's going to be. It's a good point you bring up, Aaron. Yeah, I just I hope it works out. I hope they don't make him like fucking Frankenstein or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. This is some bolts in his neck. It'll make it sturdy. Like, oh, God. No, that's. I forget what program we're talking about. We're talking about AEW, not <laughs> WWE. That's what they would fucking do. Right, fair. These bolts in his neck, pal. Makes it sturdy. <laughs> He's got to see a therapist, man. Let's make a whole lot. Uh, all right, let's move on to our six-man tag here. What do you got? All right, talk about better than expected. Uh, Christian oh. Cage, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus defeated the Young Bucks and Adam Cole. Yeah. Surprising, dude. That about Luchasaurus. Like, how tall is this? effing dude doing yeah. like inverted fill and do it inverted flips off the stage and you know jungle boy showed out christian cage good as he always is yeah i'm not in love with the putting tax in people's mouths like i'm not i don't love that what about knee pads um, you okay with the knee pads? The weird tax with the knee pads and the shoes and like what the hell are you doing but <laughs> it did what it had to do like yeah. the, like this looks to be this feud looks to be over um okay thank god um in that because it's kind of ran its course but this is a good payoff it was a fine match i thought yeah i love the idea of uh, 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 jungle boy resisting using the chair that was great right trying to be the ultra face and then he uses it and in the, in the post-match promo he's like i did things i never thought i was ever gonna do but these guys are my friends i got a feeling they're gonna turn on jungle boy or jungle boy is gonna turn on them something feels weird about that once you give a a a face the taste of violence you've set the path towards a heel turn or 
you guys turn heel on him because he won't, because he didn't like the taste of violence. He won't go back and do it again. He's even more adamant against it. So to me, I think they could make something out of this moment here where he finally took that chair and uh, and whacked uh, whacked one of the young books out and got the pin. So I mean, I, I like it. I like the idea. Jungle Boy becomes Jungle Man. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Sure. Jungle there MJF. Go. Why not? Oh, uh, <laughs> we shall, do, do you sense that, or do you think I'm uh, way out of? Well, I think his I think his promos are just awkward, like like yeah. honestly. So uh, maybe. maybe eventually down the road, but I, I don't know if it's in the, in the short term. What can we say about Adam Cole taking another loss here in AEW, Aaron? Dude, don't even get me started. <laughs> what is I don't understand what is happening here? This if it doesn't rolling NXT, if it doesn't lead to Adam Cole for like breaking off, which it looks like it's gonna, yeah, and, it does look like and it. reforming the undisputed era in AEW. If you watch Dynamite, the yeah, the I don't I don't love Kenny Omega promos because I feel like they're breathy and weird, but <laughs> the thing he did with Adam Cole and the box in the back was amazing. He that said was. he said, uh, guys, I need you to just like hold down the fort gonna go away for a little bit and you just kind of relearn and adam cole stepped up he's like yeah kenny no big deal we got it he's like oh whoa, whoa. i don't know i'm gonna <laughs> give you the wrong idea but i was talking to the bucks and he's like oh shit got a little dissension i love it so as long yeah. as it leads to that we're fine like adam cole de- didn't need the young bucks to come no. back to so or kenny need... omega i yeah, hate to exactly. break it he didn't exactly he didn't need yeah. he didn't need cronies like he's adam cole maybe so yeah. as long as we get there i'm fine with it <laughs> Man, I'm starting to visualize. That's going to be hot. That's going to be a hot, hot thing. With the Undisputed Air. Oh, my God. That would be awesome. Anyway, all right. Uh, anyway, all right, let's move on. All right, what's our next one? Oh, God, we have to talk about this one? All right, go ahead. What's our next one? Our next match is Cody Rhodes and Pack defeating Andrade, El Idolo, and Malachi Black. Another one less said about, but better. Yeah, man. What do you think of this? Well, first of all, people saying, oh, I was waiting for the Cody heel turn. You guys are crazy. He was never going to turn heel in this match. Never. There was nothing about this that made any sense for Cody to turn on Puck. It's not big. Like I said in the preview, it is not a big enough person for him to turn on for it to be an effective heel turn. It wouldn't. It'd be kind of lame. And so it's no surprise. But unfortunately, because no one turned on each other, this became just four dudes going through the motions and getting the and getting the victory for Cody Rhodes and Pac, but it didn't really. <clears throat> I don't think it helped anybody in this match. I think this match helped nobody in this match at all. Even though we saw some really good wrestling from Pac, from El Idolo and Malachi as well, I just don't think anyone came out of this match uh, looking positive. To be honest with you, so uh, what what did you think? This is a dynamite match that was on pay per view. They could have done this on dynamite. Ah, they could have done this on rampage. It's just like yeah. this is a thrown together match. Like Pac and and Cody Rhodes aren't like homies. Like I don't right. understand right. why we did this, but I don't. I just Cody's gonna just have to accept it. Like, bro, you're just gonna have to turn heel. You're just gonna have to accept it. No, that's how it's gonna have to be. Cody and then you know these other guys. Like, you need to find a spot for Andrade to do something. You need to yeah. find a spot for Pac. You got to push Malachi Black to where you're going to put him. It's just four guys that don't really have a direction right now. Yeah. There's not, uh, here's the deal there's not enough belts for the guys you have on the roster right now. And that's dangerous. I mean, look at, you've got Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Miro now, Malachi oh. Black, uh, uh, Idolo, Pac, even Cody you could throw in if you wanted to. All those guys, what, what are we going to do here? You, you don't even have a belt. Uh, that's going to be there. And Omega, I mean, sorry, Paige is only going to take them one at a time. And this Danielson thing is probably going to run for a few months. So where are you going to go next with all these other guys? This and they just weird. brought in Jay Lethal. Yeah, they just brought in Jay Lethal. Shivani! Oh, my God, that was great. You want to talk yeah. about that next? Yeah, sure, man. Jay Lethal is all Ooh. elite. I mean, how cool is that? Like, had a great match with uh, Sammy Guevara yeah. uh, on Dynamite this past week. So. Yeah, the former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, longtime uh, Ring of Honor and Impact wrestler, finally is all elite. What do you think? Top five back and forths ever. Jay Lethal and Ric Flair. Ever. 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 I rewatched that. I was watching it the other night while my girlfriend was watching one of her British mysteries. I put it on low volume and she leaned over to me. She goes, Oh my God, are you watching that again? She didn't even, she didn't even see what it was. She heard it. 
She knows it by heart because I've watched that back and forth so many times. <laughs> Old is ride, long is line. Listen, all, everything about Jay Lethal coming at this point in his career is fantastic. But once again, Aaron, here's another guy who's been a champion for a number of years in his own freaking federation. And now you're bringing him over to AEW. Where are you going to line him up? You're going to have to set up all these kinds of programs, all these guys. But eventually, all these guys deserve a shot at the title, if not to get the title themselves. And Jay Lethal has been a guy who's been on quite a journey here mm -hmm. from uh, TNA to where he is now. And so I'm happy he's going to have more eyes on him. I'm happy just as AEW is ascending, Jay Lethal comes in. So this is going to be fantastic. The promos, the wrestling, the he is the entire package. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do here in AEW and who they put him up against and where they line him up and uh, what new feuds he's going to get involved in because that man can wrestle like the day is long against anybody. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see what he can do. And don't be surprised if down the road he is the champion. He is the AEW World Heavyweight Champion and for a while because he's got an ability to really get a crowd behind him and put on a great show with any wrestler. I agree, man. I agree 100%. I think what you're going to start to see is those two-year contracts when AEW first yeah. started. They're, they're coming up. Yeah. The people at the bottom of that roster, your uh, Joey Janela's, your Kip Sabians, who's been out with injury, your Sonny yep. Kisses, your Dr. Luther's, your Serpenticos, or whatever. <laughs> you're going to start seeing them just, they're going to be gone. Yeah, they have Because they There's can't no afford it. Like, I don't yeah. care how much money. Tony Khan has this is the fucking New York Yankees. Yeah. Like even the Yankees have standards at some point. Like you can't just keep throwing money at everything and everybody. It's just not possible and leave your bottom card out of it. And these yeah. people they don't even use on TV. Big Swole, another one has been on TV in almost a year. So it's yeah. like, what do you even do with these people? That's that's gonna be the issue going forward with AEW. How do you mix all of this together and make it like a good stew? How does it work? We're going to eventually. We're going to have to go to a brand split. There's no other option, oh, Aaron. They God. keep they keep bringing these great. They're not bringing in, you know, mid carders. They're bringing in great wrestlers into this mm -hmm. um, federation, and so eventually they're going to have to do a brand split. And I know they were talking about another show, but they're going to have to do the red and blue brand essentially, like like WWE does, and give a top title for that brand and a top title for that brand because there's just too many great wrestlers here to be just kind of wasting time battling until uh, without a shot at the title. I just think eventually uh, it's going to capsize if they don't do that. And let's not forget, like we're, we may not even be done yet. I mean, Bray Wyatt's still out there. Yeah. Braun Strowman's still out there. The Briscoes are still out there. Right. So it's like, holy shit, dude, we may not even be done with all the talent acquisitions that AEW could possibly have. So there's going to be a lot Reed. going on. Bronson Reed is still Bronson. There. Well, Bronson Reed is in uh, New Japan. So, yeah, we, well, as we found out this weekend, but okay. Uh, okay. for now, for now. All right. All right. So. Just saying. Uh, okay. What's our next match here, Bo? All right. So our next match is Dr. Britt Baker, DMD oh. defending her, uh, AW women's championship <sighs> against Ty Conti, retaining that title in a match that I kind of got what I expected. Um, Ty Conti has improved. Yes. Um, to a pay-per-view event with Dr. Baker, your top female competitor. Not sure. Not sure about that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this, man. This this match. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I didn't want to jump in. Go ahead. What, it's, okay. it's very... It, Ty Conti reminds me of Liv Morgan. And I'm going to tell you why. Oh, yeah. She gives me the... Like, the people are really behind her. She seems like a very, very nice person. Mm -hmm. um, but... When it comes to the ring, I feel like she's lacking. I'm sure people are like, how dare you? Lib Morgan's like so much better or whatever. I've never seen a match of Lib Morgan's that I'm like, hmm, I'd like to watch that again. Charlotte, <laughs> Charlotte Flair, like Rhea Ripley, Becky, Sasha, yeah. the elite of the elite, Asuka, uh, Kyrie Sane, like they have matches I want to see again. Yeah. I don't think I've ever like rewound a moment from a Lib Morgan match and been like, yeah, that was great. Yeah. And that's not to say that she doesn't have it in her. I'm sure she does at some point. But it just felt like Britt was was really carrying this one. Yeah, he, I listen. How can I say this correctly? Zoe Stark is a one thousand times better wrestler than Tay Conti. I don't care what anybody says. She is, and and from what I've seen here, having Britt Baker, I think gets exposed in matches like this, Aaron, because she's not capable of carrying these matches 
fully and making it work with any person she gets in the ring. There are certain wrestlers that are consummate professional wrestlers that can make it, they can make any match look good, no matter who they're against uh, in, in, in a match. And especially in a pay-per-view, it's their job. I got, I think Brick Baker got a little bit exposed here because I mean, take Conti blew some spots. Um, she's nowhere near as, um, organic of a wrestler as as like uh as a uh, brit baker is and brit has worked hard to get to this spot you know and and so but this is this is kind of a, a i don't know it's kind of a crack in her armor here that she couldn't carry this match effectively enough to get it over with the fans and to have a great response and even afterwards her promo was like i know people are sick of me winning i'm like yeah, no, i don't think that's it i don't think yeah. that's it brit it's they're sick one. of you not having competition that brings out the best in you so to me they better fast track this thunder rosa thing as soon as possible man or get ruby out of that situation and dump her into this because this is getting super frustrating to see her not being able to go toe-to-toe with someone who can bring out the best in her and this this was not and take Conti. i think she took some big steps backwards here man overall because this is a time to shine this is a massive pay-per-view more eyes are on this pay-per-view right now because of the wwe kind of losses so this is a chance for you to really show up and an opportunity to show out and you put on a match like that it's just like it shows that you've got either a you weren't in the game mentally or b you just don't have it right now you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think something we're going to talk about in a minute is something that uh, Ty Conti should have done. She mm-hmm. comes out, she's got the uh, Brazilian and American flag yeah. together. She's got the face paint. She looks awesome. Looks yes, really cool. Absolutely. But she's in a fight with Britt Baker, somebody that's been like kicking her ass and getting the better of her. She's doing the fucking shimmy and dancing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, listen, I understand that your character, like your good having fun time girl. Fucking put it away. Like yeah. you, you have war paint on. Put yeah. it away. Yeah. And then she, God bless her, she retweeted a uh, a thing of her doing a backflip off of the top rope and completely mm-hmm. missing it. She's like, "Yeah, look how much I've learned." And people in the comments were brutal, <laughs> saying, "Yeah, that wasn't good." <laughs> so <laughs> she's got a long way to go. She seems like yeah. a nice person, but yeah, this this wasn't it, man. Yeah, she's gonna fade away. I, I tell you, if, if she doesn't pick it up, I'm telling you right now, just like I said, there's two year contracts and all of that. There's a lot of women out there who can wrestle, and they're gonna eventually have to beef this roster up if they want to have some legitimate competition for that belt and put on some classic matches. I mean, that's one of the uh, ugly secrets about AEW is th- their women's division is not as strong as it needs to be, and they're bringing in all this great male talent. How are they not bringing in this great female talent to kind of match what they're doing on the male side of things? That to me is is ponderous, man. Absolutely ponderous. How isn't Brandy Rhodes like pushing Cody to go and get these people and who's going to push Khan to go and get these people? Because this bringing in Ruby is great, but you know, you got to have to you're going to have to bring in more for for this division to really kind of stand out from the WWE's division. Well, it's like when they started this division, they, they hit the stumbling blocks because they yeah. made Re- Riho the champion and it was like, okay. Yeah. Then they transitioned to Nyla Rose and she wasn't ready for that. Nope. It was like, all right. So then they put it on Sheeta and it's like, okay, well, she does a good wrestler. She could do some stuff. And then finally, after two years or so, they put it on Britt Baker, which they should have done in the first place. Right. And now when they got it to where it should be, they're like, oh shit, we don't have anybody else. Yeah. Because we've already done the Rosa match. Right. So how do we do that again? We're going to bring in Ruby Soho, but we can't have her beat brit right away right so we got to put her to the side i don't know i don't know yep. where they go from here like yeah. what's wrong with putting serena deep in there yeah like, come on let's get her in there so have some fun maybe yeah, yeah. Oh, such a shame all right let's move on to this nasty fucking match bro <laughs> everything that ty conti did wrong cm punk did right because yeah CM Punk is a veteran oh my god people gave uh, people online were giving cm punk so much crap for wearing the Muay Thai shorts. And I'm here to tell you, it's a fucking fight. Yeah. And he was here for a fight. Yeah. And he didn't do the clobber in time. He didn't do any of that shit. CM Punk came for a fight. He's so and smart, man. Eddie Kingston. It's psychology. It's beautiful. Yeah. And Eddie Kingston came for a fight. And they did exactly what they had to do. I thought it was a great match. I think mm-hmm. it elevated Eddie Kingston tenfold, which yeah. is exactly what you bring in CM Punk to do with the guy like Eddie Kingston who the fans love, I would compare him in one way to The Rock, and that's that eventually The Rock became the people's champion. The Rock was 
the guy that people would always get behind. I feel like Eddie Kingston could be that guy. Yeah. In AEW. He's that guy that people will always get behind because he's got the story, the backstory of nah, people didn't think I was good enough, but here I am despite all the odds. And that's it, it's a true underdog story. And you know, eventually, like, like I think you even predicted, Eddie Kingston's going to get CM Punk one day. Yeah. He's going to get him back. Mm-hmm. So hell of a match, hell of a story. Loved oh. every minute of it. Me too, brother. I was worried that this was going to be one of those matches that didn't live up to the hype and, and Eddie was going to blow some spots or whatever, uh, or CM Punk was going to do kind of some, some cliche shit or some cheesy shit. None of that happened here. From the opening moment, not the bell, the opening moment of Eddie swinging around and almost knocking or decapitating CM Punk before the bell. You That was great for the fans because you're like, well, Dummy, if you had waited for the bell, you'd have gotten the victory. But the fact that you hit him before the bell, you now can't pin him to get that time. That was great. It was so smart. And it, it furthered the storyline of Eddie being too impulsive, too emotional, too blah, blah, blah. So you push that with that moment. It's great. And then you you turn Punk into kind of a wounded animal. What's a wounded animal going to do? And, man, it was a balls-out awesome match brutal match some incredible spots uh and you know it was very believable the way it ended because they both put so much energy and effort into the match that they were gassed that was believable by the time that they were gassed and then eddie walking out instead of shaking punk's hand Beautiful. that was brilliant and even punk with the with the two finger salute was great as well so to me all around and then punk afterwards did you see the post match with the blood dripping down his face talking he goes you guys have been talking all your shit online blah 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 and he just said all that stuff he dropped his i haven't even begun yet to show you what i'm gonna do here and i'm picking it up and i'm getting better every week and i haven't lost yet but i'm picking it up and getting better getting stronger because i'm here to fight and you guys haven't even seen what i can do yet and i was like yes i lost my shit when i saw such a great promo yeah, dude, it was everything it needed to be. Kingston not shaking the hand is just Ugh. picture perfect. I don't know who wrote it, but thank you. Yes. <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, what's our next one, man? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> the Inner Circle defeated American Top Team and <sighs> the Men of the Year. And the only highlight for me was getting to see Minnesota legend, a, a WA legend, Baron Von Raschke, <laughs> putting the claw on uh ethan page and that's yeah. all the people need to know <laughs> the great baron von rashke so uh, other yeah. than that pretty forgettable match um yeah. jericho yelling at junior dos santos to come to a spot was fucking horrible and why Oof. is this here yeah god bless chris jericho needs to stop sucking the blood of sammy guevara and santana ortiz and let them do something else this inner circle stuff sucks yeah. Jericho kind of sucks. And the American top team thing with Dan Lambert sucks yeah. outside of Paige Van Zant. Um it's horrible. I hate it. Yeah, it wasn't a good match. And um I agree with you. They've all ascended past Jericho. I don't care what anybody says. Jericho was great for years. I it took me a long time to come around on Jericho. I kind of hated him for a while. Not because it wasn't talented or was a good wrestler, I just didn't like something about him. But then I came around. But that NJPW run when he was a villain, when he was a heel, that's what finally like made me come around on him. And now, and I was enjoying him for a while, and especially on AEW, he's kind of carrying the torch for a while and the banner for a while uh, for that uh, company. So now you've got to be smart, though, Aaron. Right, dude, you're the old man in the room. You've got to sit back and let the young guys go. You know what the outlaw did? The outlaw sat back and did not participate in the singles tournament or the tag team tournament the showdown because I wanted the young guys who we drafted to have a shot at getting some glory and establishing themselves. There's nothing more I need to do, but I wanted those guys, those rookies, to have a shot at showing the fans what they can do. And Jericho needs to do the same thing. Jericho needs to sit back. He needs to tell creative, hey, we're going to kill this inner circle thing. Let them roll through this thing. Let them go and do their own thing it's time he's got to take it upon himself but in that final but in the uh post-match promo he's like we will punch you in the mouth we some motherfuckers we don't give a shit but i'm like dude you're taking shine from these young guys yeah you know and so to me it's like why are you even talking just sit back and let them do that let them shine let them have their moments you've done it there's nothing more for jericho to prove so to me it doesn't make sense that he's trying to come out and be the lead guy with this unless this has been talked about in the back and all the guys that are in inner circle are like, 
dude, can you be the lead for us? And we'll play off of you. Blah, blah, blah. If that's been talked about in the back, that's something else. But I think it's time for someone else in that inner circle to step forward or for all of them to turn on Jericho and kick him out. That oh, would be incredible, too. I would like that. And Hager, too. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he's, he's, he's literally nothing. He's a statue. I mean, yeah. I don't know if that's true because we've seen Santana talk. He's a good talker. Yeah. Santana so, Ortiz would be fine on their own. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know what that's. I, yeah. Fuck this. Hager's, fuck this H- thing. H- yeah, Hager's just kind of, I don't, I, you know. He's a statue, dude. He doesn't do yeah. anything. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, anyway, and, and there's a reason this match was right before the main event, right? I think they said. Yeah, bring everybody the fuck down so yeah. we can bring them back up. Exactly. Jesus. You don't put CM Punk at Kingston and then Hangman oh, Adam yeah, Page and Kenny Omega. You don't do that. Yeah, yeah it's too, too much emotion. But yeah, the main event, Hangman Adam Page defeating Kenny Omega to become the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, reluctantly taking out Omega, hit him with a dead eye. Yeah. Just said he probably would do that. And then. Matt and Nick Jackson maybe getting involved, but then said no. So what's mm-hmm. that about? Yeah. Some good storytelling here. I thought Hangman was great. I thought yeah. Omega was sensational. Yeah. Probably Omega's maybe his best match in AEW. I think it was tremendous. I think Kenny Omega showed everybody why he's considered the best in the world by so many. Mm-hmm. And I think Hangman Page showed why he is the like one of those pillars that I keep yeah. talking about of the AEW company. Yeah. He can run with it. I got one problem. Okay. Get Adam Page away from the Dark Order because yeah. the Dark Order. I know people love them. I get it, but they are a bunt. They are a stable of job guys. God it's like it. it's like Stone Cold Steve Austin celebrating with like the fucking oddities or something like back in the day. Like the Brood, the Brood. Well, no, the Brood weren't jobbers. It was like I, I mean, it's just like a oh, the awful, oddities. Like, yeah, like the oddities, like. Yeah. It's just Spirit Squad. <sighs> yes, yes. It's like Stone Cold Steve Austin, like cheering with the Spirit Squad. Like, makes no fucking sense. Like, I get they had a storyline together, and that's great, and it's run its course. But that's the only time any of the Dark Order guys will ever main event a pay per view is when they're celebrating with Adam Page. I'm sorry, yeah. it's true. Get him away from him. It sucks. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. If you see Adam Cole reforming uh, the Undisputed Era and then you see the Dark Order with Hangman Adam Page, that ain't nowhere near in the same ballpark. And so I agree with you a thousand percent. When he was doing his post-match promo and all those guys were standing there, I'm thinking to myself, dude, why are they even in the ring? Yeah, you, This is ring. about you. They, knew, they, they're, they're, they are sullying your moment by being in the ring. Uh, throughout this sequence this is about you and your journey and aew creative taking a victory lap around that arena for having built that story up the way they did and the match delivered it wasn't that becky lynch ronda rousey charlotte match this thing delivered and it was a great ending a fantastic win for for a page and omega there were moments where i thought i was going to be right aaron there are there were a couple of moments where i was like Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get to crow about this on strong style and then it turned and i was like ah but it, but the right man won and having now omega go off and go on some spiritual journey hangman with blood coming off of his head they're talking about his own anxiety and his doubts about himself really super dude 20 years ago you're not having a mental health promo after you win the belt you're not having that aaron it's incredible fuck 10 years ago you know maybe five even you're not having that kind of promo after you win the top belt in the company. And it was an incredible thing to see. I was personally got, I got a little emotional because I was like, fuck man, I've never seen this. And this is, this is the further breakering of the stigma of mental health. It's happening in a red state fucking uh, uh, um, a sporting event, like a, a pay-per-view in a wrestling ring. And I love that it's happening across the board in all sports or sports entertainment, and that needs to keep happening. So I was really proud of of Hangman Adam Page, especially in, in my home state and his home state of Virginia, so talking all that stuff and breaking it down. So I love that. But I agree with you a thousand percent. Dark Order need to get the fuck out of that ring because it was Hangman Adam Page's time. And I don't know what you do with him now. You can't keep him running with that Dark Order because eventually it is going to drag him down, and people are going to start connecting him with a job with essentially, like you said, kind of a jobber faction, and it's going to take some shine off of his run, dude. He's got to let them go. Yeah, go by association. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson said he was going to kick the head off of all of them. So <laughs> good, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, exactly. And it's not that I don't like people in the Dark Order. I've said Stu Grayson is the star of the Dark Order. Right. But just, God damn, dude. It is seriously like they had um, Preston Vance had a match against John Moxley. It was like three minutes. Like these guys, it's a job or stable. They never win. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Imagine if he had the undisputed era standing behind him. Like, there's the difference. There, right? The huge yeah. difference. Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, all right. Any final words on AEW Full Gear 2021, brother? I would give it uh, an A grade. I think it was great. Yeah. I think it, it did exactly what it needed to do. Yeah, I would give it an A minus. Absolutely. I think just the the couple of matches there, the inner circle match, the Conti match, kind of kind of brings it down for me a little bit. But certainly not out of the A range. It was fantastic. Uh, and that final match is the way you send them home, as you said, send the last week, send them home happy, and it certainly did. And now we'll see. And the, this Danielson thing is going to be fun, a lot of fun to see these matches between him and Hangman Adam Page for sure. So, outlaw, uh, outlaws, cowboy shit all over the place, bro. Go get it. Go get it. Um, all right. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, we're going to do the um, watch along. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Survivor Series 1996 mm. is where you will find it at 51 minutes exactly. You should see Gold Dust. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the King Jerry Lawler, Crush, and yes, Doc Hendricks, also known as Michael PSAs, doing the interview. So <clears throat> give you a minute to get there and we will get started. Yeah, what was going on around this whole thing? Did we know that Rocky Maivia was going to appear? Were there, were there, I don't remember, were there vignettes? Were there promos? I don't think there was. Say? I feel like he just okay. showed up. And wow. then uh, the main thing here is uh, Triple H and Mark Mara are feuding over the Intercontinental Championship. Mm-hmm. As you see, Triple H is wearing it there, which means I don't know if Sable was around this at this time, but we would oh, get yeah. Sable very soon. So there you Good go. Point. Good point. Uh, that is obviously Dustin Rhodes as go as a, a gold dust. Who is that yep. on the left? Who is that on the left? It's Crush. Oh, that is. Oh, wow. Crush. It is Crush post, I think, post DOA, right before the Nation of Domination, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I forgot about the Nation of the Domination. The white guy in the Crush. Nation of Domination. <laughs> Yeah, as, they, as as people say, you got to be a pretty badass white dude if you're hanging around with a bunch of black uh, tough ass black dudes. So, um, all right, are are we ready to start this thing? Should we? Anything more we need to say to set this up? I I think we're good. It's twenty five twenty five years since this happened. The Rocky Maivia debuts, of course, third generation superstar. You know him as the Rock, the biggest star in Hollywood. So, yeah, let's get it cracking, man. All right, let's do it. Count it down. All right, I'm gonna say three, two, one, play. Then you hit play. Three. Two, one, play. Listen, the most beautiful belt on planet Earth. You you love the IC title, huh? I love that belt. Wow. The white one. Yep. Yeah. White and the black. Yeah, yeah, agreed. It's a nice belt. Christian said he's got a surprise for us for this match between me and Dan Merle for the GOAT championship. Oh, I don't I'm know not, what that means. Uh, Maybe, maybe you got you a gold goat. <laughs> Bring that thing out here. <laughs> I can't. I'm, you know, I can't worship false idols. I can't be having no golden goat. What? Oh, here we go. Oh, go. Were they married at this point or divorcing at this point? I believe they were married at this point. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking about that plane ride from hell and the stuff that she said. Oh, about. my God. Yeah. Oof, rough stuff. Yeah, we're far away, I think, from that. We're like okay. five years away from that. I'm taking my glasses off because it's get a little bit closer here. Fair enough. There's Crush. There he is. First out. Madison Square Garden. Worth noting that Rocky Maivia makes his debut at the biggest arena in the United States, if not yeah. the world. Madison Square Garden. Unbelievable. That, that tells you how much faith they they had in him. Yeah. Yeah. How much faith they they thought that you know how how good he was going to be. And of course, it all goes and back when Lawler still wrestled. He, do you Love think he gets team. enough respect for being a great heel? I mean, he's such a great heel. Dude, he does not get enough respect from today's wrestling fans. I feel like you need to go back and watch Memphis wrestling to really get who Jerry Lawler was. Yeah. One of the toughest so SOBs in the game. Fought through so many injuries. Oh, I still love the gold dust. I love the fucking um, music. Worth noting, uh, Jim Ross... Vince McMahon and Sonny on commentary. <laughs> right, Sonny. That's right. I forgot about that. Chop <laughs> of the camera guy there. Hello, Sonny. Innocent as pure as she looks. Ah. Oh, that's right. He was two time by this point. I always forget how much of an impact he had, he really had on, on the WWE. Oh, big time, big right? time. And kept this character going. I mean, this is ninety what 
96? Yeah. He kept this character going into the 2010s. You pull it out every once in a while. Oh, uh, there he is. There's Mr. Inic, former Mr. NXT. Oh, oh God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> When it oh, meant yeah. who, something. Who did he used to come out with? Did he used to come uh, out with he, a woman? He used to come out with different women. Oh, I, I see, I see. But yeah, then Mark Marrow stole Sable and that whole thing yeah. started. And Fantastic shape, Triple H. He's not even as big as he's going to get. He's still in fantastic shape. Oh, sunny, sunny, oh, sunny. Sunny is hot. No lie. I was 10 years old in 1996 and uh, <laughs> Sunny was all the way alive. <laughs> I love her shutting down Jim Ross. Look she's a she's a good like yeah like backstage interviewer and like person on commentary. She's low key kind of good. I love Vince. This is I mean she's literally telling the boss to hold her back. Vince is like calm it the fuck down. Oh, I guess Sable was here because oh she there she is. This is Brock Lesnar. Oh, uh, Mark Marrow. Mark Marrow, motivational speaker these days. Mark really? Marrow, yeah. Oh, interesting. I gotta try that game once in a while. Worth noting, Mark Marrow not black. <laughs> um yes as no. as his Johnny B bad character in WCW what have you believe Ooh. not, not Ooh. black Ooh, yeah probably less said about that the better yeah uh but she, so sable married him yes married she was, stone she cold was, and then married no no, 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 no that's no. deborah that's deborah she sorry. was married to mark marrow before she got into the wwf and right then, then they broke up and uh or divorced and then she married brock lesnar brock. Oh, you got to trade up in life sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Mark Merrill, fantastic body, by the way. Yeah, get yeah great, great shape. Great shape. Former Ready boxer, that's legit. Right, right. Old gloves boxer. Made the uh, made the ponytail work. Look at that body. It's fantastic. Still got a good body. Yeah. There's Barry Windham. Oh, my. In he the like short, stalker. very short-lived stalker gimmick. How is a face star- a stalker? <laughs> well, he used to, like, paint his face camo. Very short lived gimmick for Barry. Yeah, terrible. Of course, former. Why does Barry? Why did Barry ever need a gimmick? Barry wouldn't have. I enough. don't know. Former NWA World Champion, former Horseman. So, I love Barry Windham. Another guy doesn't. Here he comes. Shake. Oh, look at that pineapple haircut. <laughs> Just happy to be there. Okay, I got to tell you something about this. Please. When he gets into the ring, he goes and points. Yeah. He thinks he's pointing at the hard cam, not the hard cam. <laughs> he point. He's like, I pointed at nothing. Kids, kids still learning. And he does it again too. At, at one point, he looks yeah. to the hard camera, and it's not the hard cam. So good. Respect to him, man. I mean, he he made mistakes, trials and tribulations, but he always learned. Yeah, he got. He was like, <laughs> he's in the dumb as hell. In the commentary for this, he said, uh, "He said, yeah. So my greatest debut, uh, nobody saw my face." <laughs> So it's four on three? Uh, well, Jake Roberts comes out. Spoiler oh. alert. I think Jerry Lawler said, cheap pops. <laughs> oh, so he's the leader of the crew? Yeah. This? Mark Mary was hot back then. I guess so. Once again, Mark Marrow, not black. But despite his Mandy Rose tan, he's not black. <laughs> now, was this him coming back from injury, or a... I believe this was one of Jake's like comeback stints. Yeah, interesting. Oh, uh, maybe maybe keep the shirt. Oh, well, he's got a little bit of a gut there. So the age has come. Yeah, he's definitely put on some weight there. Sunny. Sunny's great. I know. She's really good. I'm telling you, she's low key good. Dude. So many other people get behind the mic and just talk about nonsense. Here's Sunny actually selling everything and making it work and being funny. Brilliant. Despite like what she's done later in life. I mean, whatever yeah. your opinions are on that, she's no. good. Some of us don't have an opinion on that. Some of us are okay with that. And she's and she's smoking. 1996, Sunny, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Yeah. Hard to beat. This is an interesting mixture of like old school legends and 
in oh, yeah. Wyndham and Jake, you know, because those guys ain't, you know, pounding weights and being the height of nutrition like Maya Villa probably was at the time and, and Mark Merrill certainly was. Oh, they Vince McMahon fell in love with Mark Merrow as Johnny B. Bad. He wanted yeah. that gimmick. He wanted Johnny B. Bad in WWF, mm. but WCW owned the gimmick. So yeah. he couldn't be him. So he's like, well, give me the best thing I can. He had really high hopes for Mark Merrow. Yeah. And it just never he got injured and it just never panned out. I don't think he ever fully got over with the fans. Yeah, probably that too. Right? But Vince, Vince was a fan. And I feel like if Vince is yeah. in your corner, you're going to get plenty of shots. And he did. I think he did. He did. Yeah. And like you said, the injuries kind of derailed him and then eventually the audience moved on. Yeah. You know, it's like Eric Bana or Josh Lucas, these guys that get that shot because the studios really believe in them. And then they just can't quite get over with the fans. Sam Worthington. Sam Worthington. Yeah. Jai Courtney. I mean, it's incredible. You're seeing two of the greats in Triple H and The Rock, and they're not even the premier. I know they're not. Yeah, they're like, yeah, The Rock's like number four on his own team. Yeah, on his own team, yeah, exactly. And even though Triple H is the champion, it's really long. Unbelievable. Like the out of the eight guys, the least experienced is The Rock. Yeah, <laughs> and probably the second least is Triple H because <laughs> he's not very far into his career. I think That's he started '94, so That's he's good not point. too far in there. I mean, we're what, how many years are we away from the Attitude Era? Like, like two. one, two? Yeah, two. Incredible. Two. What a difference there is in two years. Yeah, two years later, The Rock would win the WWF Championship yeah. for the first time. So Insane. there you go. Insane. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> Ross. Ross playing heel. Wow. All three of those ladies still around today. Still, yeah, still doing it. <laughs> still looking good, too, in 2021. But wow. the what she's referencing is there was this picture, like famous picture of Sonny that was allegedly downloaded over a million times on America wow. Online. Wow. Dial up, man. You know, it took like an hour just to yeah. download one picture. Remember those days. I'd be finished. Uh, I'd be, I'd be uh, finished jagging off before the fi before the okay. picture. Okay. All right. Family the show. <laughs> family show. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, family show. <laughs> I know gold dust is in the match, but we don't need to talk. About <laughs> <laughs> the androgynous gold dust. Oh. To me, and I'm sure to many others, probably to you as well. Hall of Famer, first ballot Hall. Oh of Famer. yeah. Also. I mean, he made that gimmick work, dude. That that gimmick would have sank almost any other wrestler, dude. Yeah, and it should have never work. worked. Should have yeah. never worked. It had no business working, but Dustin did such a great job with it, man. You know what gimmick didn't work? What's that? Rocky Maivia. <laughs> yeah, that's true. After this, didn't work. He goes away for like six months. Is that right? And they worked on his character or whatever. Well, he uh, he would keep doing this, like the smile and baby face. Yeah, and then. They, they he had a match with Bret Hart on Monday Night Raw, and Bret was a heel. Yeah, and Bret like put him in a figure four in the post, and instead of like booing Bret, they were booing The Rock. Yeah, and they were saying die, Rocky, die. So then he was like, "Well, hell with this. I'm just gonna run with it." Joins yeah. the Nation of Domination, becomes The Rock. It was great. Then breaks off from the Nation, does his own thing, and if you know the rest, as they say, is history because of the biggest stars ever. I think people don't give enough love to Nation Domination because it was all black wrestlers, and it's bullshit. Well, I'm going to tell I mean, you this. Yeah. It could have been something really great. I don't think yeah. they did enough with it. Um, but I, And I think they have, like, young guys, like they had D'Lo and Mark Henry that just right. weren't ready for that. But, you know, Ron Simmons and uh, and Kama, Kama yeah. Mustafa, they, those, they should have been great together. Right. It's a good point. It's a good point. Well, so remember Hit Row? Point. <laughs> hey, hey. They're still around. There's no B Fab for please, now. Please. Yeah, are they still around? <laughs> Poor B Fab. I think you can get five dollars for your shirt now. I think you get <laughs> no, I you know, I was looking at some cheap WWF shirts the other day since yeah. they fired everybody. And yeah, uh, you can get some good deals on there. You get a, a nice carrion cross shirt for like five dollars. Nice. Well, Black Friday's coming too. So oh, that's you know. right. 
help right. get those. I'm waiting for that that AEW sale or the uh, Pro Wrestling Tees sale starts on the 23rd. So oh, does it? Okay, yeah. Cool. So I'll definitely be buying some stuff on there because they, I love their shirts. Shout I gotta to get them. me a a Danhausen Christmas sweater. I love oh. that Danhausen. Are you are you in the loop on Danhausen? No, who is Danhausen? Oh my god, dude. So Danhausen, yeah, is like he's a, he's this character. He's in Ring of Honor. Like that's okay. where he's, he's at. But he, oh, hello. Uh, but he had, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by the. No, no, we should, we should watch here. this first before the Dan Housen stuff. Look at that. Jeez. Look at that. Look at them. You know, you can't doubt his athleticism. And look, that's kind of smart. The, he didn't, he didn't, he, he hasn't, he did the little double kick to give him a little more time to get Lawler against the ropes. It was smart. Lawler sound like a son bitch. Yeah. The look at this. Oh, here it is. The Young Bucks going against each other here. And for the next 20 years, we'd see this. Wow, man. Dude, I tell you, like, I know he got hurt or whatever. Re for whatever reason, that Kurt Angle uh, replaced him in that Ronda Rousey tag oh, match with Triple yeah. H and Stephanie. Yeah. I would have killed to see that again. Yeah. Because they had that really good promo on SmackDown. Where they were talking about like you remember that where they were talking about like old times yeah yeah and he's like yeah yeah we had great times and then they got face to face i was like oh yeah I want it was that great again. i love when he showed up at uh the rocks first time hosting uh saturday Night live oh yeah and, and yeah, said yeah. you better you better step it up for the cup i think there was a little bit of truth combined with uh some storyline fun stuff yeah because you know you know triple h wanted that wanted to be the one leading the ww into other pieces of media you know that the oh, yeah. ego is and always there for Triple H to be the top dog. And of course he killed it. So yeah, he did. So that was that. Look at that. Whereas Triple H struggled through Blade Trinity for God's sakes. <sighs> Jarko Gremlin. <laughs> One of my FCL questions. What was Triple H's character? In really? Blade Tr yeah. What was his character in Blade Trinity? Jarko yeah. Gremlin, of course. Yeah. Just glad you got one right, man. All right. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> It doesn't stop you. We talk about our match. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's fine. It was an exhibition. It doesn't count. It's supposed to be an exhibition. It's supposed is to this be crush? an exhibition. Is this crush, is crush near the end? Uh, the end of his WWF run. He, of yeah, course, would go uh, to WCW and form a tag team with Brian Clark, and they would be uh, called um, Chronic. Right. You remember right. Chronic? Right. Anyway, Dan Housen. So... Yeah, he has like this famous gimmick, like on the indies, where he's like, imagine like Svengoolie, right? You know who Svengoolie is? Yeah. He's kind of got that going on. Like he has like the face paint, like a horror like host, and he kind of right. he like wears a cape, but he's like adorable. Oh, so his gimmick is like he's very nice, but he's also very evil, <laughs> and just the stuff that he says is hilarious. Like the right. stuff that he does, so. Right. He recently broke his leg, which is very oh. sad. Broke his leg on um, Halloween, doing a match. Okay. So he's like gimped up, and he was yeah. watching Dynamite, and he tweeted at Audrey, the referee for AEW. Yeah. Oh, my God. And was telling her that Max Caster was cheating. <laughs> he's like, I'm watching TV, and this Max Caster guy is cheating. Just wanted to tell you. And she like responded back with like, what? And he goes... <laughs> Just keep your phone in your pocket, and I will tell you every time that someone is cheating behind your back. Like just <laughs> shit like that, dude. It's so funny. That's you gotta follow brilliant. Dan. You gotta follow Dan. All right, Hansen. all right. I'm sure people in the chat are like, "What the fuck, Roka?" Right now, but <laughs> I don't love like silly stuff in my wrestling most of the time. But I yep. love Dan Housen. Like I can't okay. not love this man. All right, fair enough. Oh is, yeah, is he a great wrestler? I don't think so, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But God, he's entertaining. Uh, so great to see Jake. I don't want in Jake's armpit for nothing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love all the interviews with Jake now, and he's so humble and so appreciative of life. It's it's great, man. So great. Yeah, to see do you turnaround. believe it though? Do you believe it? You don't think so? You don't believe I think it? Sometimes it's an act. I really okay. I, I think he doesn't like people. Well, he could is, be an introvert. Maybe he, it, he, he could be, like, but it's, it's not his thing. Didn't he tag Lawler? And Lawler didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. mm. Great puncher, Lawler. Great oh. punch. For my money, the best working punch ever. Oh, Jerry yeah. The King Lawler. 
you 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 hear the kick happening, but it's the punch is so vicious it distracts you from the kick. <laughs> oh, look at that's terrible. Oh, he's such a great heel. Look at him making fun of him. <laughs> oh, if they only let me be this much of a heel in the Shmoda. Oh, I would oh, do it. Oh, we'll delay here. Oh, no, oh, the DDT. Nice. Boy, he took that well. Oh, Lawler's out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many DDTs that Jerry Lawler has taken from Jake Roberts over <laughs> over the years of their time, like in Memphis together and <laughs> That's a good point. In the South and different stuff. I wonder. Uh, <laughs> oh. Do you think Rocky's like <laughs> having this conversation with Marrow? It's like, okay, what do I do next? And That's what I was just on... thinking, man. That's yeah, what I was right? like. He's probably sitting under the learning tree with Mark Marrow a little oh, bit. Oh, probably. Yeah. Even though he should probably be talking to Wyndham. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> this Lawler walking out. That's great. Who's the ref? Looks like a young that Marlon is, uh, Brando. This that night. is Jack Doan. Really? Jack Doan. I don't believe he's any. He's uh, with the company any longer. I think he retired. Wow. Uh, but yeah, Jack a little Doan bit like a young Brando's son or something. Interesting. Gold dust. Twenty four Care Productions presents. Yeah. Shout out to Dustin. Still doing it. Yeah. I tell you, man, that match with him and his brother at AEW, still yeah, one of the best matches they've done at AEW ever, man. I think Dustin's the only active uh, wrestler in this match. Like currently. Oh, currently active. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fair enough. Because uh, Crush has unfortunately passed away. Yes. Uh, right. Lawler, I think, still does independence, but I know he's not like wrestling on TV. Right, right. Um, Triple H, of course, has had his issues. and Yep. Wyndham is retired. Mark Marrow's retired. Rock is in Hollywood. So Jake, do you think we've seen the last time no, of Triple H no, in no, the no. ring? Uh, Triple H in the ring, maybe. Yeah, is that Harvey Whippleman out there? That is Harvey Whippleman. <laughs> the great Harvey Whippleman. <laughs> well, Kamala's done. All right, I'm gonna go be a ref. <laughs> what? It's like Teddy Long when he became a ref, and then think- GM. That's great. Honestly, I think uh, Harvey Wilhelm was a ref first. Really? I think, and then I they think came yeah. Around. Oh, interesting. I okay. Think. <laughs> I could be wrong. I uh, might be wrong about it. Someone fact check me on that. I think he was a ref first before they pulled him in. Oh. Oh, wow. He got him there. Uh, Wyndham was stalked. The stalker was stalked. Worth noting, Barry Wyndham, of course, tag team partners with uh, Mike Rotunda. Yes. The father of Bray Wyatt. Wonder why he's, why Bray Wyatt's real name is Wyndham. <laughs> One, two, three. Curtain call. Wow. With a three count, and the stalker is out. Oh, oh remember me? The wild man. He hasn't been in the ring in a while. Oh. Nice knee lift there by the wild man. Yeah, they. I feel like they tried really hard with Mark Merrill. It yeah. just didn't. I liked him. I always like seeing him. I like yeah. Johnny B. Bad too, to be honest with you. But oh, man. It's worth not black, noting, but I mean, um, other worth, than that, no, not fine. black. Worth noting. Definitely not black. <laughs> take a note. Take a note. <laughs> Mandy Rose, take a note. Oh, <laughs> listen, don't start catering to black Twitter on our show, okay? Hey, black I love wrestling Twitter on our show. I love, uh, I love Mandy Rose, but uh, black Twitter's watching. Black Twitter's watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i i worry about her run as a champion in nxt i worry she's in the war games match i was like but why <laughs> we'll put her in the war games match that sounds i want to see blood i want to see blood from me it's never gonna happen i want to see her go through what fucking Britt baker went through i want to see never, blood on they're that never face. gonna do that dude i know it's bullshit what were we watching? It was one of the one of the dark side of the rings where they said you you can't hit everything but the face. Hit everything but the oh yeah, Lula Vashon. Yeah, that match uh, was saying everything but the face, and that's ridiculous. I oh. could see Becky doing that because like she got the bloody nose that one. Oh yeah, time, that was I great. Oh my god, what a visual! But I don't think that we're gonna see that yeah. from Mandy in NXT. I'm coming around on the Becky comeback. 
I am. Yeah, I think I am too. Yeah, yeah. She's because of her, not because right. of like any great storytelling. Like she's right. just so good. The promos are good though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, her that thing with her and Liv Morgan, she made that work. Liv was struggling. She made it work. I don't know. I worry about that match, man. I think we're gonna get a Britt Baker Conti match. That worry that worries me. Well, if anything, Becky's more accomplished and, and better in the ring than Britt. So yeah, true. She can carry that really match. Yeah. Carry it, yeah. Who interferes, though? I wonder. Or does anybody interfere? Hopefully somebody to make it stop. <laughs> Maybe Bailey as her comeback. Uh, I think Bailey's still a couple months off. I don't, yeah. I don't think she's... Because they're under the same, right? Bailey's at SmackDown and so is Becky, right? Oh, dude, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> That's fair. That's actually fair. I don't even fucking know anymore. They keep doing Ooh. this, like, they yeah. keep doing this ad for, like, the Survivor Series, which is just this weekend, by the way. Yeah. And they're like, it's for brand supremacy. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Like, they were just on SmackDown two weeks ago. Now they're on Raw. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah. I gotta stop that. God, Sonny is the best. No one wants you on merchandise, babe. <laughs> Sonny. <laughs> Brutal Sonny. Fun fact, when I was in fifth grade, yeah. I had the uh, WWF Raw magazine oh. with Sonny on the front. Yes. Um, in lingerie with a pool stick. And as a child, yeah. I didn't know that was uh, odd um, to have in elementary school. So I cut out pictures of Sonny and other wrestlers and taped them to my desk. Oh. And then when I came home or came back to school the next day after doing that, they were gone. <laughs> and then I got a, uh, a nice, a nice conversation with my teacher about why that's not acceptable for elementary school. Uh, early developer there. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Early well, developer. Yeah. Yes, sir. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, oh, she looks pretty. <laughs> Let's put her right. Let me put her right next to this picture of Bret Hart. Yeah, she uh, was in '96. She had a Raw Wrestling magazine when she was where she was in uh, lingerie photos. Absolutely. So shout out to her. She's she all the way live, brother. All the way live. Yeah. So Vin, uh, here, here's a little sub subplot because these two ladies are in here. If you worked right, this is from Russo. And back in uh, talking that 1998 issue with Sable and Sonny on the cover, uh, this was uh, in 2014. He said this: If you worked the wrestling side of the WWE at the time, it was no secret to anyone that Sable and Sonny hated each other. They sure did. He said, "Now I've got to be fair. I think it was more on Sonny's part than Sable's. There is no doubt that Sonny was just flat out jealous of Sable, and for, quite frankly, I could never understand why. To me, they're two completely different types of women with their own appeal. Sonny was the girl next door, and Sable was the mysterious exotic beauty." They both had their followers. So when I made the call to do a swimsuit edition of the Raw magazine and give both Sonny and Sable their separate covers, I should have known that I was in for it. I chose a picture of Sonny that was extremely sexy. I thought it put her in a spectacular light. Well, she didn't agree, and I found that out firsthand when she came onto our floor to look at the pictures we chose. After viewing them, she grabbed them and ran to my office and screamed, that's not me. That's not me. I remember being caught off guard, so off guard at the time, that all I could do was laugh and say, well, if it's not you, who is it then? So, so <laughs> interesting. interesting story there. <laughs> I think I read a story once where they offered Sonny Playboy, like yeah. when she, at, in like 96, 97, that super heyday era, and she yeah. turned it down. Wow. Wow. So, How ironic. Yeah. And Sable did not. Oh, she, she did not. not. No, she did not. One of the most, one of the highest selling Playboys of all time. Nice head scissor takeover there by uh, Mark Marrow. Yeah. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sable's done Playboy like three times. So that's wow, good. good for her. Wow. Yeah, she was in prison, right? She... Mm, Sonny was not Sable. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Sonny. Yeah, she went to prison. <sighs> yeah, did six months because she was uh, suspended from old DUIs. Wow, in yeah. Pennsylvania. Apparently, she has a hell of an OnlyFans. Uh, that I cannot no confirm. Surprise. This is what I've heard. No surprise at all, my man. No surprise. Look at that. At Look at that Whoa. move. And Allie's Triple H. Whoa. Nice move. Nice move. I like that. 
You can why see you why, Mark, why, why they why, thought of a lot of Mark Mara there. Why turn to porn? Like, I don't understand it, you know? Uh, like, you well, can, I mean. She's very, still a very attractive woman. I huh? just, just can't you exchange, change in on that? Dude, the, the spot, I think that is cashing in on it for her. Oh, all right. Like people people want to see it. People want to see her. Like, she's got this nostalgia for, you know, wrestling people. My, good Lord. Lord almighty. That that didn't feel good. Dude, that's um, a 10-foot drop. As high is, as he was throwing yeah, himself up there. Too. I think, like, for people like me, you know, my yeah. not I'm not trying to date you or anything, but it's like, People in my generation that were like 10, 11, 12, yeah, yeah. 13, 14, and you know, 96, 97, like we yeah. just have a thing for these women because it was like our development. Like even right. Tori Wilson mentioned it in her Hall of Fame speech. She was like, I'm glad I could make so many of you become adults, which was great. <laughs> great line. Oh God, catch the mic. Anyway, I just think she was uh she was just, just cashing in on that. I guess, man. Maybe she's in control of it too, you know, like deciding who it is with and and whatever. But I don't know; just seems odd. Listen, man, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. If somebody yeah. wanted to pay me two hundred and fifty dollars to yeah. like watch just, me take a watch just to, to watch me take a poop, <laughs> fine. So there you go. So, so now, here okay, we go. So let's set the stage here. We've got the rookie Rocky Maivia oh, yeah. against two bad guys. So he's already the underdog. Yeah. Listen to the crowd. They're already behind them. Yeah. The Rock says um, in his commentary, which you can find on sportsillustrated.com. Yeah. He said that um, he said it could have gone one of two ways. They could have either thought I would look stupid with my smiling and my blue trunks and all that kind of business, yeah. or they could chant for me. And luckily for me, it went the other way. <laughs> yeah. But that tells you how much charm he already had that they were already cheering for him and he was relatively new. This is his first WWF yeah. match. How insane like, is it that they're char cheating, ch uh, chanting for him already? Yeah. Yeah. No dark match. It no rarely happens. Like that. Like it's it really the happens. first, if ever. Yeah. Now, is he still green here? Of course. Of yeah. course. He's not the rock that we all know, but no. He does some cool shit, though. Wait, look at that. Oh, that. I love that. Oh, he's excited. <laughs> His son is getting all turned on. She's like, look at that fire. My goodness. That's a lot of energy for a young man. That hair, uh, though. Whew. Worth noting, The Rock is half black. Worth noting. He sure is. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, clumsy. Clumsy. Clumsy on that one. Yeah. You can tell his he's a little gassed. You can see the legs. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you watch enough uh, football, you can see what gas looks like in the legs. Look at him. He's stumbling around like Rocky at the end of Rocky well, Four. Ring shape and football shape, two different things. Two wildly different things. Oh, look at that. Right in front of the ref. Oh, Where's the DQ, on, Jack? In the balls. Come on, Goldust. He's a rook. Unnecessary. Oh, crush his finisher at the time. The heart punch, which is oh, dumb boy. as fuck, but here nice. he goes. Oh. He punched out his own guy. Crossbody. There, he got that one right. Oh, that was a fast one there, Jack. And uh, Rock said um, right there when he did the crossbody on Crush, you could see him lean down and he yeah. was telling Brian Adams, Crush, he said, uh, thank you, brother, for putting me over like that. I really wow. appreciate it. Really? That's yeah. awesome. He said Brian Adams is like a hell of a guy. But he said, I'll do anything for you, brother. So oh, That's really sweet, man. And here we go. Shoulder breaker used to be oh. the finisher of, the Ro of Rocky Maivia before we hit the rock bottom. Here it is. Bam. Oh, I don't know how that knocks you out, to be honest with you. Is there a nerve in your shoulder there? I don't fucking know. Look, at uh, Papa Shango used to do it. It's called the Spellbinder. It's a great <laughs> name. So there you go. Rocky wow. Maivia wow. in his first WWF match pins yes. a two-time Intercontinental Champion in Gold Dust and a yeah. uh, long-tenured professional in uh, Crush or Brian, yeah. Brian Adams. A far cry from the rock music. To end Ind this. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So there you go. And I think Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force was in the audience. We got a shot of Carl. It is New York City. Uh, so, so there you have it, folks. There we have it. Yep. Uh, we're gonna let's stop that. So yeah, so we wanted to cover that. Twenty-five years of the debut of the Rock. 
Stuck around a bit. Pretty good one, I would say. <laughs> that guy did okay. That guy did all right. What would you it think was... about seeing it again? That's great. I mean, you, you see the beginnings of what you're going to get from The Rock uh, as a wrestler as he develops. Like, you're going to see him, like, the whole like, the, the hand thing that's uh, the, before he punches – that is something he still keep he does or continue doing rather throughout his career. The energy feeding off the crowd, the come on, all of that stuff. He was doing all of that stuff through his run, whether face or heel, in the beginning uh, with him. So it was great to see all that. But I mean, like you pointed out, the fact that the crowd was already behind him in his first effing match tells you that this guy had natural charisma. And audiences in mass naturally wanted to cheer for this guy, even though they did turn on him just a few weeks later. Um, he took the lessons. And when he took the lessons, the crowd loved that he took the lessons and got behind him or hated him even more. And any response that's big is a good thing for a wrestler. So to me, overall, I think it was fantastic to see uh, see him there. And it isn't as bad as I thought it was. It isn't as bad as I kind of uh, had assumed it might be. Uh, for the rock you know and he's a seven-time champion two-time i intercontinental champion you know he won the world tag team championship five times does that yeah. make sense yeah sure mankind in the rock man yeah royal rumble 2006 triple crown champion and i'm looking here at bleacher report they're saying he won the wcw championship two times that must be the uh the other belt the world I don't, title. Uh, that it, the title history there gets a little muddy right uh, when they cross over this belt so i don't count that because the rock was never in wcw proper exactly so that exactly. doesn't count to me so yeah but pretty incredible stats and what a legacy man 17 championship reigns in the wwe 17 that's incredible man so shout out to my brother and he's still doing it and he's uh you know pounding and uh, grounding and pounding you can see him when you follow him on social media the guy inspires so many people 279 million followers uh on Instagram. Dude, what's well, that's a grande god? That's the population of countries, entire countries. Uh Aaron, it's insane. Yeah, I need to look at Ariana Grande real quick just to kind of <laughs> compare is, take the piss out of that real quick. Is, Ariana uh, Gra- is she in the is she in the uh in, in the billions? She might be. You know what? Like Side note, my wife and I have been watching The Voice. Like, I don't really love those kind of shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is damn entertaining, that Ariana Grande. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Rock has more followers than Ariana Grande by 2 million. What does that tell you? There you go. That's something else. Like, it goes The Rock, uh, Ariana Grande, Kylie Jenner, and then Selena Gomez. Wow. So wow. There you go. Insane. So okay. many people. Wow, that's that's kind of shocking to be honest. He's a guy that's had like he's never been like mirrored in any kind of controversy, like from oh. all intents and purposes, just seems like a fucking great guy. Would yeah. literally give you the shirt off his back. Yeah. Um he's divorced and has a business with his ex-wife. And his they ex-wife seem to have a co-running the XFL with him, dude. Yeah, they seem to have like the best relationship. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, he's fucking Maui in Moana, okay? Yeah. If nothing else, if you remember him for nothing else, if you never saw him in the ring, mm-hmm. you're welcome. The Rock. Also, twice interviewed by the Outlaw. Twice interviewed go. by... That's another put, the stats put on it. One of, the, one of the nicest guys ever. Uh, you have to wait for him, but you when, when you wait for him, he gives you everything. He cut a promo, an impromptu promo with me for the Schmodown, and the second time we met, we had a fantastic time just talking about... Uh, and having Jack Black and Kevin Hart cut promos and having The Rock decide who won between the promo off between Jack Black and Kevin Hart to promote Jumanji, uh, the next level. The I'm oh, sorry, the Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. It was great. He's such an incredibly warm, nice guy, and he remembers you. That meant a lot. When I, when, uh, when I showed up for the Baywatch thing, he remembered me, and it just meant a lot. So what a great guy, and you're right. He's never mired in controversy, even though he did come out and say some, some stuff about Trump on his Instagram it didn't affect him at all. So he is a Teflon star because people sense that this guy really does care about people and uh, wants to elevate people. And I think people discover him. And just like they discovered him on the debut night that we just saw, Aaron, a lot of people can't help but immediately gravitate and sense in some subconscious level, some primal level, that this is a good one of the good ones on this earth. So shout out to The Rock, man. One of the best to ever do it. I mean, I think there's no doubt about that. Like, Absolutely. That's, you know, that's something that I think about a lot. Like, mm. you and I remember him as The Rock. You yes, know? The, yes. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment. What is somebody, like, 
What's the next yeah. generation going to remember him as? That fucking guy from Skyscraper or like Rampage? <laughs> like, I wonder if like, okay, so you know how like our generate our generation are kind of people like even my dad like yeah. they revered guys like stallone and like like you do right. like stallone and schwarzenegger yeah. and bruce willis and these guys like these action mega stars chuck norris and some my dad loved chuck norris but like right. is he gonna be that guy for a lot of people too like is he gonna be that that generation that generational guy for a lot of people because that's fucking awesome yeah he absolutely has to be the generational guy for a lot of people i mean being part of the Fast and Furious franchise, being a part of his own, being part of Ballers, you know, running the XFL. Like, there's so many different, uh, the Young Rock show. There's so many. Black Adam. Black soon. Adam. Yeah, that's going to be the next le- I mean, as huge as he is now, the next level is Black Adam. And when Black Adam happens, I guarantee you, you're going to see even more millions of followers following him because there are quite a few superhero people that may not know him that well. And when they see him do this, this is a whole nother realm that he's going to be existing in. And it's the ascension of the rock, man, even more so, you know? And so people love him, dude. People love him. There's no, as you said, there's no scandals or anything. So he's a generational guy. Absolutely. So no surprise at all. It's kind of funny how like he transitioned into that, but like Stone Mm -hmm. Cold Steve Austin, like as good as he is. And he's, I mean, Stone Cold's done plenty. He's in a national commercial with iced tea for Tide (laughs) and stuff like people shit on that, but I think they're funny. I mean, he's got like a very successful podcast. He's done all these things, but The Rock, like, yeah, the Rock's just next level, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. But, but like, John Cena's like, like light, light, light Rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. the biggest Batista. Yeah, Batista. Well, the thing about Batista is he's probably the better actor of them. But yes, it's just I think Dave is going to be in a prestige picture and might win a prestige mm-hmm. award. I don't know if The Rock will ever. Yeah, win an award like that. I think I've said that for two years. You can track me all the back to Collider and Movie Talk when I said Dave Batista will win an Oscar before it's all over. I, I just have a feeling he's going to win an Oscar. As you said, Aaron, he's the best actor of any of the professors that have made the, the crossover. And he's definitely in line to win one of those scenes. Because of And he even says, like, uh, that that was my past. I'm not going back to that. I'm focused on this. So shout out to Batista, knowing what the next step is for him. The Rock is a different animal completely. He wants to literally take over the world. And don't be surprised. You know, people have joked about it, but don't be surprised down the road if there isn't a presidential run. And if anyone can bring us all back together after all this nonsense that we're dealing with now on social media and in our streets and in our political discourse, it's The Rock. If there's anybody who could unify this country once and for all down the road, if he gets political knowledge and understands all the ins and outs of what's going on and the issues that are affect people day to day, don't be surprised. That would be one of the most incredible things ever. What Schwarzenegger had that moment in in the in the um was it the rundown where he says to him, "Good luck, kid." He's essentially saying to him, "I'm handing you the torch. Mm-hmm. Let's see what you do with it." He got to governor. The Rock may get to senator or president. Don't be surprised. Don't Under, be surprised. Underrated film, the rundown. Actually, the the namesake Absolutely. of the Schmodown rundown was from the rundown. But um, fair enough. Right. Yeah, could you imagine Vice President uh, Mick Foley? Um, no, <laughs> on the uh, on the on the campaign trail, I'm happy to be here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I get the cheap <laughs> pop from everybody. Oh god, be great. Um, but yeah, anyway, programming note, like you yeah. like you said earlier, uh, yeah, tape show this week, tape show next week for Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, but we will be covering another Survivor Series match. And John, I think this one you're going to be really excited for because mm-hmm. I know I am. Like most of these combatants are amazing. Some all timers here. We're going to be reviewing. Survivor Series 2001, the match of winner take all. It is yeah. Team WCW and ECW versus <laughs> Team WWE. We break it down for you. On Team WWE, we have The Rock, mm. Chris Jericho, The Big Show, The Undertaker, and Kane versus the team of Stone Cold Steve Austin, Booker T. Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, and, and Shane McMahon. But amazing <laughs> competitors in this matchup. Should be a great one to, to revisit the invasion from 2001 <laughs> is what we'll be covering next week. I'll definitely be, be wearing my what shirt for that. That's there you go. Sure. Yeah, do that. Damn sure. Don't you denigrate Shane McMahon. The future, he was the future pro wrestling. Dude, 
Shane McMahon in his day was amazing. When they started doing the best in the world stuff, white-haired Shane McMahon is not for me. Not yeah, for I me. agree with you. I'm not, not going to disagree with you there. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up here. Thank you all so much for an hour and a half, just like one of our regular shows. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, as we said, uh, we're going to be pre-taped. Uh, we're going to pre-taped uh, next week as well, but then we'll be back live uh, doing our thing and hanging out with you. But please watch the show. Still share the show. Tell people about the show. Just because we're pre-taped doesn't mean you, sh- you should shirk on your responsibility to tell people about Strong Style, especially over the holiday weekend when people have more time to spend watching uh, these shows for sure. So please give them some love and share them on all your social media. Aaron, always a blast, brother. Where can they find you? Find me on Twitter at only Aaron Turner. I recently just shared um, AJ Brown of the Tennessee Titans talking about a video he posted about his own mental health issues. And I think that People need to watch it because if you saw, if you're a football fan, you saw the news about Zach Stacy and that fucking horrible video that's yeah, going around. Jesus Christ. Look at AJ Brown, a guy <laughs> in the NFL that you could actually look up to, a guy that is actually saving lives by speaking out against his own struggles and his own attempted suicide last yeah. year. Unbelievable stuff. What a hero. AJ Thanks. Brown. So check that out. Absolutely. 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 Definitely people watch it. Uh, you can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter and on Instagram on uh, Twitch, the outlaw nation, all one word. Uh, and then uh, of course our Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca and my other podcast, top 10, the cinephiles and the geek buddies all happening and shout out to carbon health, which is supporting the hours, uh, sponsoring the outlaw nation uh, channel for the next couple of months. And certainly the geek buddies specifically, but doing all they can to support everything that's going on in the world. So go, if you got some health issues going on, some stuff going on in your world, go and get it checked out carbon health www.carbonhealth.com see if there's a clinic near you if not they do virtually uh, they do uh, virtual work as well in a number of states so go and take a look at that if you've got any health issues don't hesitate remember what happened with kevin smets aaron has had his own health issues himself i have had my own health issues it's important to take care of yourself not all of us can be you know uh can be the rock and even the rock has had his health issues for god's sake so Go and handle what you need to handle for God's sakes because we want you hanging out with us for quite some time on Strong Stuff. All right. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Have a th- happy Thanksgiving because this is the, the episode before Thanksgiving. So have a happy Thanksgiving with your family. Enjoy yourselves. Maybe catch up on some old Strong Style episodes. There you go. We'll, there we go. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode here of Strong Style.